and I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look. Okay, so welcome to a very special episode of the Daniel Boland Show because we are in the aftermath, the fallout now of the first U.S. presidential debate. Debacle. More like. Uh, and uh, I know what some of you are going to say in the comments. You stay out of it, limey, right? You, you all get very, um, you know, uh, intolerant at times when I talk about U.S. politics. But, hey, I'm going to be fair. I'm just going to, uh, yes, I'm going to give my two cents. Yes, I'm going to give a few Pretty hot takes, but that is my job. That is my bread and butter as a certified YouTube edgelord, uh, like I am. And uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try and be fair. I'm going to break this video down into three sections. We're going to take a look at some of the, <laughs> the best bits of the debate between Biden and Trump. Uh, then we're going to look at some of the uh, reactions to the debate. And then we're going to look to the future. Uh, what does the future hold? Um, okay, I'm going to do, this is some of my finest investigative journalism on display today. I'm like, uh, uh, Louis Theroux, I'm, uh, uh, Michael Moore, I'm, uh, well, actually, I'm, if anything, I'm more like, uh, <laughs> I feel more like David Attenborough, uh, you know, these animale on display, on display. Who's Daniel Boland? Oh, Daniel Boland, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? Okay, so before we get into the clips, I really, I have to preface this a little bit. Um, I don't want to alienate anyone. And that's be not because I'm sitting on the fence. There are no splinters in my ass. Uh, it's because I hate it when other people do this, right? That they divide everyone along political lines, and it's so fucking... Uh, that's not what I want to do at all. However, there are tough times ahead in this world. Everything's going crazy. Uh, populist right and left-wing uh, uprisings everywhere, for better or worse. Uh, the uprisings, you know. Uh, may, if you like them, that's good. If you don't, then, you know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, whatever. The world's going crazy. And if you can't have a laugh, uh, then you're, you're screwed, okay? We've got to be able to have a laugh. And to be able to have a laugh, we have to be able to tell the truth. So the first thing you have to admit about the Trump-Biden uh, debate is that it wasn't Joe Biden's finest hour. Both are making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID. Excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with. Uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Now, before you come at me in the comments telling me how that clip is doctored, it's cherry picked. Okay, I've been hearing the same shit for five years now about Joe Biden. Okay, we're finding we're finding we're finding housing for Black Americans. I'm sorry. Sit down, watch the 90-minute debate. The guy can't string a coherent sentence together. The impact of on the the choice. He can sometimes say words in almost the right order, and it, you kind of get the gist of what he's saying. The idea that they're gonna, I'm not, I've been proposing that everybody, they pay, the millionaires pay 1%. By the way, I've got to say, <laughs> Donald Trump is no, uh, who's a good speech person? Uh, Martin Luther King. I didn't have sex with a porn star, number one. There you go. Donald Trump is no Martin Luther King. That's the takeaway from this video. I dream about Biden. That's a dream. Look, what I'm saying is, I don't think that uh, Donald Trump is any kind of uh, master debater. 
right? I, I don't think that uh, his speeches are particularly detail-oriented. There's no stats or numbers, really. He just says everything's amazing and brilliant and billions. And We're the greatest economy in the history of our country, and we have never done so well. We Every, everybody was amazed by it. Other countries were copying us. Uh, how everything's absolutely terrible and being absolutely destroyed now. He has not done a good job. He's done a poor job and inflation's killing our country. It is absolutely killing us. Okay, that's all he's ever saying. I feel like if you wanted to beat Donald Trump in a debate, you're starting off with a pretty good position. 50% of the people are going to want the other guy to win. Okay, so put a guy there who has a little bit of charisma, uh, you know, some mental agility and can memorize four or five stats or facts that might uh, trip Donald Trump up when you read them to him. But they don't do that, the old uh, Democrats. They put Joe Biden there, the one guy who can't do any of those things. One percent. So no one after, uh, I would not raise the cost of Social Security for anybody to get away with, get rid of the ability of Medicare to, uh, the, to for the ability to for the us to be able to negotiate drug prices with the big pharma companies. The, I, what I'm going to do is fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. No one was hurt. No one Israeli was accidentally killed, and it, it stopped. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the the the, the, the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more border patrol and more uh, asylum officers. And the incredible thing to me is that uh, we, or a lot of people, have been saying this for years now, that uh, Joe Biden... I mean, just go back, for fuck's sake, go back six, seven years and watch a video of Joe Biden talking. Right? You could see he wasn't brilliant, uh, but he was a lot better than he is now. Go the right thing to do for me and for my family, and look, I... Uh... Um, Bo wanted me to run, yeah. and uh, and Hunt and Ashley, they all did. And when Bo passed, uh, Hunt called a family meeting and said, "Look, we Bidens always do better under pressure." Why Go back ten years, it's a different person, okay? And for some reason, uh, Democrat-leaning people and uh, the media outlets that support the Democrats, they have been denying all of this forever until two days ago, until the debate. When the debate finished, suddenly they all changed their tune. After years of gaslighting, I feel gaslit. Thank you, President Biden. It's been a terrible thing, what you've done. The fact is that the vast majority of constitutional scholars supported Roe when it was decided. Supported Roe. And that was that's, this idea that they were all against it is just ridiculous. And this is the guy who says the state should be able to have it. We're in a state where in six weeks, you don't even know whether you're pregnant or not, but you cannot see a doctor have your, and have him decide on what your circumstances are, whether you need help. The idea that states are able to do this is a little like saying we're going to turn civil rights back to the states, let each state have a different rule. Look, there's so many young women who have been, including a young woman who just was murdered, and he, he went to the funeral. Uh, the idea that she was murdered by, a, by, a, by an immigrant coming into the and talk about that. But here's the deal. There's a lot of young women to be raped by their, by their in-laws, by their, by, by their spouses, brothers and sisters. By, oh, it's, just, it's, it's just ridiculous. And they can do nothing about it. And they try to arrest them when they cross state lines. Thank you. President Trump walking off the stage. The first debate of the 2024 campaign and the earliest presidential debate ever now in the books and in front of the voters. Tonight, along with Aaron Burnett, the first word on what those voters might make of it from our political professionals, from our CNN Flash Poll and Swing State Focus Group. We'll be talking to surrogates, including Vice President Harris, getting fact checks from our Daniel Dale and new reporting from inside both campaigns. With me here, CNN political commentator Scott Jen. Joe, you did such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the There is no two ways about it. That was not a good debate for Joe Biden. Ben? Um, that was painful. Uh, I love Joe Biden. I work for Joe Biden. Um, he didn't do well at all. Uh, he, he did not do well at all. And he looked 
you know, I'll give you the analysis, you know, kind of have the, the old man versus the con man. Uh, I can walk you through how I'm supposed to see it and say it, but I just want to speak from my heart. Um, I love that guy. That's a good man. He loves his country. Uh, he's doing the best that he can. Uh, but he had a test to meet tonight uh, to restore confidence uh, uh, of, of the country and of the base, and he failed to do that. And I think there's a lot of people who are going to want to see him consider um, taking a different course now. Uh, we're still far from our convention, and there is time for this party to figure out a different way forward if he will allow us to do that. Um, but that was uh, not what we needed from Joe Biden, and it's personally painful for a lot of people. It's not just panic, it's pain uh, for what we saw tonight. That said, um, I too was on the phone throughout much of the debate um, with um, Obama world people, with Democrats, um, with people who are political operatives, with campaign operatives. My phone really never stopped uh, buzzing throughout. And the um, universal reaction was somewhere approaching panic. Hmm. Um, the people who were texting with me were um, very concerned um, about uh, President Biden seeming extremely feeble, seeming extremely weak. And, you know, I'll just reiterate what I said earlier. President Biden had one job tonight and it was it, it one primary job. And yes, it was to litigate Donald Trump's, you know, criminality and, and all of those things. But he had to settle his own party. Mm -hmm. He needed to settle Democrats. Democrats, you know, they always talk about Democrats are bedwetters and Democrats are always panicking. Yes, Democrats are always panicking. They're always scared. You, right. They're always thinking they're going to lose. Like Democrats are, are very pessimistic. They're, they, this is just neurotic. who they are. They're neurotic. But Joe Biden's job was to reassure them tonight. His job was to calm his party, to make them feel that, yes, I can do this. I have four more years in me. I have the ability uh, and the stamina and the strength to do four more years. He did not do that. He did the opposite of that. He made them more panicked. Mm -hmm. The people who were texting me were even more panicked. They actually expected it to be better than it was. And now they're in a, I, I won't say a full-fledged panic, but it's getting there. But I undersold him when I said he was cogent. He's far beyond cogent. In fact, I think he's better than he's ever been. This is a battle for the future of American democracy. And now is a good time in June, thank God, in June and not October, in June. This is the last chance for Democrats to decide whether this man we've known and loved for a very long time is up to the task. So it would seem that CNN and MSNBC and uh, all of these networks that have been denying that there are any issues with Joe Biden for the last few years are coming round to the idea that perhaps he's not quite all there. Um, I guess the last hurdle is going to be Mrs. Screeches a lot. Here in North Carolina and across America, <clears throat> who are working hard to find a secure place in the middle class. The moms who worry that their daughter... I saw in him then the same character that I see in him today. And even though he has faced unimaginable tragedies, his optimism is undaunted. His strength is unshakable. His hope is undeterred. Look, perhaps Joe Biden isn't what he once was, but uh, his values remain. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. There can be no doubt about what Joe Biden's core values are. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Wealthy kids, black kids, Asian kids. And it's my belief that there are a lot of bright, talented young minds in the Democrat Party that can carry on Joe's legacy if he's not up to it. Back. And are you ready to fight? Because we have a
If AOC can do that, I think I can just come out and say, Nick. President Biden. You can see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds, or 235 pounds. Well, you said six four, 200. Well, anyway, that's it. You're, anyway, just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The reason I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf with you if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie that he's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. But I have, you know, how many? How, I've seen you swing. I know you swing. Okay, let's let's, let's not, not act like children. President Trump, Trump we're going to let's around. not act like children. <laughs> I love the way the most flustered Donald Trump got in the entire debate was when he heard. That uh, that Joe Biden had a six handicap. Kareem, I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. Uh, and but by the way, I told. Wow, what uh, what a time to be alive, eh? Uh, the presidential candidates uh, <laughs> arguing about their uh, their handicaps, their golf handicaps. I think that was a missed opportunity there for Trump to say something. Play on words with handicap. The only handicap you've got, well, something like that, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, I've enjoyed today's video. I hope you have. If you have, let the algorithm know. Give it a like. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Are you uh, very angry at me for, for uh, laughing at Joe Biden a little bit? I'm sorry if that is the case. I'll get back on my fence. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're about... Uh, 200 or so subscribers away from 100,000 now, so that's uh, that's a good thing. And uh, uh, what else? What else is there to say? Oh, yeah, click the notification bell to see my uh, future videos as well. And uh, what else? There's other things. Yes, Patreon. Uh, if you want to help out with the channel, the link's in the description. And uh, you can get access to other videos, secret videos. There's about 12 of them up there at the moment and more to come. Uh, so uh, that would be a massive help if you could do that too. I'll see you in the next one though. Uh, cue the outro video. Bye. Hey everyone, let's do a tutorial siren. Breakdown.